Interviews are the cornerstone to any documentary, and a lot of the time it's the driving force behind your film. Today we're going to take a deep dive and talk about how to film professional interviews for your documentary. Before we jump into this video, I wanted to talk to you guys about today's sponsor, Riverside. Riverside is a video and audio recording platform that you could use to record podcasts, or in my case, interviews for your documentary in 4K resolution. Let me just say that again, 4K resolution. If you're anything like me, I like to record my pre-interviews that I have with my subjects. And if you're making a documentary and one of your characters or subjects is in a distant location, you could actually use Riverside to record your interviews for your projects. The cool thing about Riverside is that once you're done recording, you could actually download individual files or you could download the files right to Premiere to save yourself some time. Riverside also offers text-based editing, which is extremely helpful to be able to go through your interview and speed through the editing process. Being able to have the entire interview in a transcript format is also great for pre-production because you can take exactly what your subjects say in the interview and actually put that on your storyboard. So if you guys are interested in using Riverside for your documentaries or even your podcasts, definitely check them out and I'll leave a link in the description down below. Without a doubt, the most important part of the interview is the interview questions themselves, and that is why this is step number one. Before you even pick up your camera, it's extremely important to research your subject and start to develop a list of questions based on the story that you're trying to tell. Most of the time what I like to do is do a pre-interview with my subjects so I can start to get to know them and break the ice before I just throw a camera in their face. And a lot of the times, as I'm having this conversation and as I'm getting to know them, I start to have a much better understanding of who my subject is and the role they play in this story. And most importantly, I start to figure out the actual interview questions that I need to help me flesh out what I'm really trying to say in this interview. The other huge benefit to doing a pre-interview with your subjects is that they start to get a lot more comfortable with you, which means that they're going to be way more open to having a deeper conversation with you when it comes time to do the interview. And one very important thing to remember is that you can't be afraid to deviate from the interview questions that you created if the conversation during the interview starts taking an interesting turn. Some of the best moments of any interview that I've ever captured was completely off the interview questions that I originally had and it just came from having an actual conversation with them on camera. And when you do this and you're kind of in that moment where you're just genuinely trying to get to know them and ask them these questions on camera, that's when some of the best moments are going to happen. A lot of the times when I ask these people these questions, they kind of end up giving me really robotic answers because I'm asking them robotic questions. So if I'm like, what did you do today? Rather than like, hey, so what's going on, man? Can you tell me a little bit about what you did today? How did that happen? How did this happen? How did you go from point A to point B? Oh, really? No way. You start to have this actually real conversation and you'll be surprised how much better your interviews turn out. Choosing the right location for your interview is extremely important. Usually when I'm looking for my interview locations, the first thing that I look for is a quiet location, something that's not gonna be too noisy and mess up the audio. Then I'm also keeping in mind that I'm looking for something that has some sort of symmetry and a background that isn't so distracting. And then the other thing to think about is that the location should also resemble the theme of your interview and your subject story. For example, let's take a look at my MMA docuseries. A great place to film these interviews and what I do a lot of the time is in the gym with the cage in the background. However, if this was a documentary, let's just say about corporate crime, I would try to film these interviews in a high rise or a really nice office building to stay within that theme. So I would definitely take into consideration what is the story that you're trying to tell and does this location help tell this story? Is it in theme with the world that I'm trying to create for my viewer? Now, most of the time I'm going to locations without doing any scouting because a lot of the times I'm going to people's houses or I'm going to their workplace and we're just kind of filming the interview wherever it is that they live or wherever it is that they work. So the first thing that I like to do is I like to walk around the location with my camera and frame up some possible interview spots and I'll ask one of my crew members to sit in and I'll just record a few frames just to get an idea of what this interview would look like. The next thing that I do is I set up my first camera angle, which is my master angle. Typically, this tends to be a wide shot with some headroom and I go through the entire interview using this angle. 
And the goal of this master shot is really to be able to fit many different moods and topics. And I usually tend to shoot this with either a 24 millimeter or a 35 millimeter lens. Now for my second camera angle, I usually tend to use a 50 millimeter or an 85 millimeter to get a tighter shot and compress the background so it feels like a different shot in the edit. And I'll also have the angle focus more on my subject's facial expressions rather than showcasing the location. So typically I like a tighter shot really honing in on my subject's face. Lighting is extremely situational and there's definitely no one way to light a scene. However, there's a few rules that I live by that tend to help me light almost any scene in any location. For most of my interviews, I use a key light, a rim light, and a negative fill. And it's very important to remember that where you place your light has a drastic difference on the style that you're going for. Typically, I like to place my key light at a 45 degree angle away from my subject, and then I'll place the rim or hair light on the opposite side of my key light. Then I usually tend to place my negative fill on the opposite side of my key light, just to give a little bit more shadow and depth to my subject's face. Now we have come to audio, which is really one of the most overlooked aspects of filmmaking. The first tip for any filmmaker is to make sure you invest in a quality microphone that captures clear and crisp sound. Typically what I do is I record two sources of audio, usually a shotgun mic and a lav mic, and what I do is I record them on two separate audio recorders. A lot of the time I'll take my shotgun mic and go directly into my camera and then I'll take my lav mic and put it to an external recorder, something like a, a zoom or a task cam, just to make sure that I have a redundancy. And if one of them fails or one of them goes wrong or messes up, I make sure that I'm covered by two separate audio recordings. And the only reason why I'm telling you guys this, the only reason why I know this is because I've used one audio source before and it failed on me and I had bad audio or or one time really worse was having no audio at all and I was completely screwed and I had to reshoot the interview, I had to give the money back to a client. It was a mess, but I have never made that mistake again. Every time I go and shoot an interview, I use two separate audio recordings. Now make sure that you test both audio sources and properly set the volume on both microphones so that your levels are coming in clean and nothing is peaking or nothing is too low. Remember that if something is really low and you have to raise the volume really high in post, what you're going to do is raise the noise floor and then if you are recording something too high and something peaks it's very hard to save that audio most of the time it's unsavable and it's just going to sound extremely distorted and nobody wants that so make sure you set yourself really good audio levels have your subject talk a little bit so that you could set those levels ask them their name what they had for breakfast just something very simple so you can set those levels accordingly Now, this is something that I preach on this channel a lot, and that is knowing how to make your subject comfortable. Your job as a filmmaker is to create this relaxed, comfortable, welcoming environment. So that way, when your subject sits down in front of all these cameras and all these lights, who's not a trained actor, by the way, just a real person trying to open up to you, they feel comfortable and they feel like this is a safe space where you're going to sit down, you're going to listen to them, and it feels a little bit more authentic than just, you know, firing off these interviews questions and you have a whole crew around you and like nobody's worrying about the talent it's extremely important that you take that into consideration when you film your interviews no matter how well you light the situation how good your audio is how beautiful the camera angle looks it's gonna be worth nothing if you don't get a really good response out of your interviewee so it's very important that you make sure that they're in a comfortable safe space what I like to do a lot of the time is when I meet them and I talk to them I pull them to the side and I say hey I just want to let you know you know you could be yourself speak candidly speak honestly i just want to capture who you are on camera don't worry about the cameras don't worry about the lights we are at your time on your pace whatever it is that you want to say or whatever it is that you want to do that's what we're going to do and if they are a little nervous or they are a little anxious try to kind of take a second and just ask them a little bit about their day like what they had for breakfast what kind of car they drive get their mind off of I'm in an interview right now, I got all these lights on me, I got all these people waiting for me to say something, go, say something. You gotta get them out of their head, get them out of that space because if you don't, 
they're never going to be able to open up to you and actually have an authentic, real conversation. So think about that the next time you do an interview. Now, I just want to tell you guys that all of this is very surface level stuff. I have a lot more content that breaks down every aspect of this interview process in depth on my YouTube channel. And if you guys want to learn more about documentary filmmaking, we are actually in the process of creating a documentary filmmaking course. And if you guys want to learn more about that, I'll leave a link down below. Our goal is to try to release this course by the end of the year. And if you guys sign up to the email list, we'll give you guys all the updates, early access, and even a discount rate when the course first comes out. So make sure you sign up for that. And I just want to say thank you guys for stopping in. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Deuces.